Here in ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to start by adding my driving network data set. And I'll just click OK to whatever dialog comes up here. It doesn't matter for this analysis. And I'll move that up to the top here in the table of contents so we can see it. There we go. So there's our driving network. And for this example, I'll also bring in the physician locations as well as the hospitals. And I'll just make those a different color. So red so they're easier to see, there we go. So there we have our hospitals and our physician offices or clinics. So we wanna find for each of the physicians, the closest hospital to assign them to as part of the closest facility analysis. So that means the hospitals are the facilities and the physicians are the incidences in this model. So I go to analysis and then I click on my network analysis drop down, and I'll choose closest facility to make a closest facility analysis layer. So in my closest facility analysis layer, we'll see we have facilities and incidences. And I'm just gonna change those to different colors, but because they came out both as pink here, I'll make one blue. So I'll make the incidences blue and the facilities pink. That doesn't change anything on my map now because the closest facilities analysis layer doesn't know what the facilities are or what the incidences are. So I click on my closest facilities analysis layer and that brings up the network analyst closest facility tab. So I import facilities to start with. And remember the facilities are the things that you want to find the closest distance to or closest time to within the network. And these are the physician, not the physician I should say, but the, these are the hospital locations where the seminars will take place. So in my add locations dialog tool, closest facility and facilities are already set up for us here because we clicked on the import facilities button. So it knows that they belong to this closest facility layer and it's the facilities sub layer or class in there that will receive the locations. For input locations, I'm gonna choose again, the hospitals. And I want to have the name. So I click under field mappings, property name and the field name, name. So I want the hospital names in my output. I need those so that each physician can be assigned to a hospital by name. So I'll know the name of the hospital to tell each physician uh, to go to or each clinic and their physicians. We won't have a default value for name it's because it's there for each one of them. My search tolerance, I'll put to 200 meters. And that way, if a hospital is more than 200 meters from the network, it won't be included in the analysis, but this will be fine for these ones. Sort field, I'll also put by name. So alphabetically by name and then snap to network. And I'll leave the append existing locations on because it's the first time I'm loading them. If I wanted to come back later and reload a different layer into facilities for a second analysis, we're using the same analysis layer, then I would click off append locations and whatever I imported in input locations will replace all of the facilities. If on the other hand, I had two layers with hospitals in them, well, I'd keep the append existing locations on and I'd run this once for the first set of hospitals and then click on the next hospital layer up here, choose it as input locations and click run again. And it would append all the locations into facilities. But here we just have one layer with all of the facilities, the hospitals. So I'll click run. Once I'm finished, I'll see that it says or shows at least visually that we now have the purple round circles, which are the facilities. And I had no messages come up saying that none were, uh, that any of them were not located on the network. So that means everything went well there. And one way to check that of course, is to open the facilities table, open the attribute table for facilities, see how many features we are. We have eight features in facilities, and then we open up hospitals and see if there's eight feet and there are eight features in there. So eight maps directly to eight. So that means all the hospitals are now network locations in the facilities class. That's, that is again, a quick validation. I won't do quick validations on every example 
because it takes extra time. But that's something, again, you need to do every time you do an operation within GIS. You must check the result to make sure it makes sense some way. And this way is easy, right? I know there's eight facilities that were brought in, so I check to see if the input layer also had eight. If it had more than eight and only eight were brought in, I mean, there's something wrong. Something went wrong, um, and that may be something that's okay. It may not be, but you have to figure that out. Then, again, I click on my closest facility layer and click Import Incidences. And it automatically fills in where they're going, closest facility analysis layer, sub-layer or uh, class, incidences, incidents. And the input locations here will be the physicians that we're assigning to each facility. And for the physicians, I'll choose a name field here and I'll choose physician ID. So that's the unique ID assigned to each physician office. And that way I will have mapped in my output table, the physician identifier dash the name of the hospital that that physician is assigned to, which is the closest hospital. And again, search tolerance, I'll put 200. Sort field, I'll sort by physician ID as well. And snap to network. A append to existing locations is good. This is the first time I'm doing it. There's nothing in incidents right now till I click run. And here I get a warning. So I wanna view the details. And it says down here, the messages, any warning will be there. That's not an error. It's something to draw your attention to, which means you need to check it out. And it says 211 features were located out of 213. So there are two features which were not located on the network. So if I look at incidents and I open the attribute table, there's 213 in there, but at least two of them were not located. And so I'd have to find where those are. And that would be one, one of them would be right here. So I could zoom to that and check it out or flash it. It could be just a ghost location. What if I zoom to it? Well, there it is here. So it says this one was not located and a snap X and snap Y of zero, zero. Although it looks to be in the right place and the right thing. So I might sort that by ascending order, the snap X, and I'll go to the top. And there's the two. So we have two here that were not located on the network. So I'll just zoom into this one to check out why that might be. Well, if I look at the network, I have a road here and a road here. So this is in Dunrobin. And if I just go to my map and I look at the measure here, I say, okay, that's uh, how far, well, that's like 600, 700 meters from that road and 600 meters from that road. So that particular physician office, it was not assigned because we don't have this, these smaller roads that you see in here represented in our network. So I might wanna increase the search distance to maybe you know 700 meters for that one. And then I'll look at the next one same one, next one is here, zoom to. And here I'll have a look here. So 400 meters there. So what I'll do to make sure those are getting located is I'm going to rerun my add locations for the incidents layer, the physicians, and I'm gonna change my search tolerance to 800 meters, like so. Then I'll click off, this is very important here, that when it says append to existing locations, I click off of that so that I now replace the existing incidences. Otherwise, it'll just repeat them all. And I'll have a whole bunch of extra things in there. My whole analysis will be wrong and I may never know it. And this is why we're looking carefully at what we're doing. So I'll now I'll click run and that will replace that entire table and the incidents layer. And look now, I have no warnings. That's always a good thing. It doesn't mean what you did is right or correct. That's always for you to decide. But software wise, that's good. There's no warnings, that's always good. And now we have, that means we have 213 of 213. So if I was to sort that table again by snap X in ascending order, I'll see no zeros there. 
So no more zeros. So you notice here as well for that point, the, the, the box that was there around this physician office. Well, it's now been moved over to near the network edge and it'll be five meters away from the network edge because that's the default offset. So if I go in there very close and I try to measure the distance now from that to the network edge, it'll be around five meters. So that you can see that right there. Okay, so I'll now zoom back out to my layer. So now I have all of the incidences are blue and I want to assign each one to the closest, um, what is that pink dot, which are the hospitals. So now I have to look at my closest facility settings and that'll be in the closest facility tab. So I start off here, the direction, I want to make sure that's towards facilities because I'm assigning the physicians according to how long it will take them to get to the facility. And I want to minimize minutes. So I choose minutes here. It will do that automatically because it's the, it's the default first one it finds. So it'll do them both simultaneously, minutes and then length and tell you how much length it is for those minutes. I don't have a cutoff because I just want the closest facility. So I set here the facilities as one. One means find the closest facility for each of the physician offices. If I had two there, Two would mean find the closest two facilities for each position. That means the closest and the second closest, or the th three, the first closest, second closest, and third closest, all the way up to, I could go all the way up to, I, can't, I can go up to 11 here, but I can really only go up to eight because there are only eight facilities, eight hospitals where the seminars will take place. So the maximum value here for facilities is eight, and it would then provide me a rank uh, or the set of distances in terms of time, I should say, the, the time it takes to get to each of the hospitals in ascending order. But I want the closest only, so I go back down to one here. Arrive to part time, we're not using time in this case. And then next, the output geometry. So I'll show you the first output geometry, which is called a long network. The rest, I don't have to do anything. I'm just gonna click run. And you'll see what a long network does. It produces the actual network paths along the network back to the closest facility for each of the incidences, like you see here. It's the actual tracing out the path each one has to take. And to see those, I have to turn off my incidences and facilities. And it's a kind of a confusing diagram. Visually, it's confusing because there's a whole bunch of overlapping paths, obviously for different physicians. That can be interesting in some contexts for analysis of accessibility. But here we just really wanna see, okay, which, which physicians are going to which facilities. And so I'm gonna change a long network to straight lines. It still calculates the time and distance along the network, but it shows instead of the network actual paths, straight lines from the incident to the facility. And it's visually easier to see who's going where this way. So that's much easier, isn't it? Left side here of the region, a lot of the physicians are being allocated to hospitals in the West End, in the East End, uh, Montfort. Um, down here, I'm not sure which one that is, Briere or something. Over here, the civic in general. So I can zoom in, for example, and see who's going where. So this, what is this hospital here? Well, I can use my regular explore tool and click on it. And that is the Royal Ottawa. So a lot of the uh, physicians are being assigned to the Royal Ottawa Hospital. And then right beside it, not that far away, is the civic campus. And I can see there's only a few physicians being assigned to, the, uh, to that campus. And it's not that far away from the Royal Ottawa. And by looking at this type of a map, I can decide, for example, which um, hospitals, so I can save time in delivering or delivering this particular um, uh, seminar about COVID-19 messaging, I could figure out, okay, well, these two are very close together. We're talking, you know, maybe a kilometer or a bit. 
So how far is that? That's like less than a kilometer away from the Civic to the Royal. And because most people are closest to the Royal, I might wanna remove the Civic and this other one right here that only has one person going, being assigned to it, which is, which hospital is that? That's the University of Ottawa Heart Institute as part of the general. So I might wanna remove both of those, uh, part of the Civic, I should say. I might wanna remove both of those. And then what will happen is these, these uh, people here, these physicians, where there's only again, a few of them will be assigned to the Royal Ottawa group. And that means I don't have to hold two seminars. I can just hold one here and that will service all these people well enough. Likewise, I could look down here at the results and say, oh, look at these two here. Here's another hospital where there's like three physician offices allocated. And then there's one right beside it, which is what we know is the Ottawa General Hospital in Chio that has a bunch of, uh, a few more assigned to it, you know? So I might wanna reduce one of those by removing the one with only a couple of people assigned from the analysis and then going about the business of re uh, analyzing the closest facility. So if I want, I can go to the edit, edit right here. I'll go out, click on facilities, edit. I clicked on the select button in my edit and I'm gonna just delete that feature. So that removes that hospital from the analysis. So I just have the general left here and then I'll go back over to my map, explore, I'll move over to where I had the other two that were very close together, which was the Civic and the Royal. And I'll remove the Civic, the Royal and the Heart Institute as well. So I'll click select, delete and Civic delete. And then I'll click on my on the edit here, save, like so. Now I'll go back out, just have a look at here. On my app, explore, make sure there's nothing selected anywhere, clear the all selections. Now I'll rerun my analysis. I'll click on closest facility, the layer, closest facility, and then run again. So that's looking better now. And the question here is, well, should I actually keep in the Riverside campus or do everything at the general here and have all those people? Because really there's a, if you look at the size of the other ones, the relative sizes are quite large in terms of the number of people going to them. And here we have, you know, these two could be amalgamated. So I might want to go in as well to my edit, click on facilities, edit, select, and I'll remove the general from this play here as well. And then I'll click on my save button, save the edits to facilities. I'll zoom back out just for visualness and then I'll reanalyze and have all these people allocated to the next closest one, which might be probably the um, this campus here, the Riverside campus. So run again, there we go. And so that looks more balanced now, visually anyway, and spatially. And this is the type of way this can be used. We did a bunch of, we started with a scenario whereby we thought we would need to have seminars at each hospital. We were able to remove three or four hospitals here and reduce the number of seminars to one, two, three, four locations by examining the results and not just assuming, well, you know, we're gonna have a seminar here for three offices when we could in fact, that's not very efficient time-wise so we wanna have a larger seminars. And now we have a, a portion space basically into a series of locations where we can hold those seminars optimally. That saves time on the part of Ottawa Public Health. Now in the results are here under routes. So the final results are always in the routes. Every time you do a run, you get routes. And so if I right click on routes and I say attribute table, it provides in the attribute table, the actual relevant information that we need. I'll close that and I'll close the modify features. So here we have in the routes results, we have the field called name and it combines the physician identifier with the hospital that it is closest to. A query would be the most efficient way to select all the physicians that have to go to the Royal Ottawa. So I might clear all that, click on analysis, 
or I should say map and select by attributes. And I'll do the routes, new selection, new expression, where, where's their name? And then I can choose contains, contains the text, and the text will be um, royal. Then I run that, and that selects out all the physicians and the Royal Ottawa. So I have the physician identifiers, which I can cross-reference back to the physician's table by the first part of that name field, which is like 83-Royal Ottawa, physician 83, 82, 80, 80, 8, 79, 78, 77, 76. All of those you can see are selected here in the map because they all will be going or asked to go to the Royal Ottawa since it's closest to them in terms of time. And you could do that for the other ones as well. There's many ways you could handle how to deal with that table. That is the closest facility analysis.